All right, so I just picked up the new iPhone 16 Pro Max. It's actually my first time getting the newest iPhone on release. And I woke up at 5 a.m. last week to pre-order this with my own money. So this isn't some review unit that Apple sent over for soft promotion. And I've always had a white iPhone since like the iPhone 5S, but I want to try something different this year. So I went for the black titanium. Maybe it was just the product photos, but it looked so sleek, I had to get it. But let's open this up and take a look inside. I watched a few videos and read some reviews, but this is my first time seeing and holding the new iPhone in person. So the box is a bit smaller, but you get the same braided USB-C cable just in a pill shape. And since we are here in Canada, you also get the SIM ejector tool. Unfortunately, you don't get the Apple stickers anymore, which sucks because that was my favorite part about the unboxing experience. So my current phone is the 15 Pro Max, but I did get the same 256 gig base model for the 16 Pro Max, which starts at $1199 in the US but I paid just under $2,000 here in Canada, so it is quite a bit more expensive here. But damn, the black titanium looks amazing, and I was a bit worried about fingerprints on the side of the phone, but it seems to be all right right now. And by the time you're watching this, I'll be rocking this as my daily phone, putting it through a lot of real-world day-to-day tests, so be sure to subscribe to catch that video when it drops. But all right, let's power this on and start with the most visible change to the iPhone 16 Pro Max this year, the larger 6.9-inch display. Most of that size increase is due to the bezels slimming even more, and this is probably the slim missed even bezels I've ever seen on any smartphone. It is a noticeably thinner bezel if you're looking for it, but it is slightly harder to see on this black titanium one because the bezels blend into the black titanium on the sides. The phone itself is also a bit taller and wider, so if you already had trouble gripping the 15 Pro Max, you might want to reconsider before getting the Max version this year, especially since the camera system is now exactly the same on the 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. The phone is almost the size of a mini tablet now, but I actually think that makes the regular 16 Pro at 6.3 inches, a pretty perfect size for people who are looking for a decently sized phone, but not something close to a mini tablet in their pocket. The announcement Apple also said this is the best battery ever in any iPhone, and it's supposed to be significantly better than the 15 Pro Max. And honestly, after a year of using my 15 Pro Max, I can say that this battery is just not enough. After a year, it's already sitting at 90% battery capacity, and I usually struggle to make it through a full day without charging. So I'm really hoping for some good changes on the 16 Pro Max, especially on how it holds up in the long term. Also, MagSafe charging is faster now with support for up to 25 watts, which is actually faster than both the Galaxy S24 and Pixel 9, which is a very welcome change because I do use MagSafe quite a lot. And if you know me, you know I always rock my iPhone with a case and a screen protector. And I actually already chipped the black titanium just a little bit when I was filming this unboxing video. But thankfully, ESR sent over some great accessories for the iPhone 16 Pro Max as the sponsor of today's video. So Apple claims that Ceramic Shield is supposed to be 50% stronger this year, but I personally would still use a screen protector to protect against scratches and direct impact. And ESR's Armrite series is a really high quality pick that's even easier to install this year and super durable. You can literally just place your iPhone on the tray tab just like that, close the lid, and then pull the tray tab, just give it a couple seconds, and then the screen protector should be installed. And for the moment of truth, you can hardly tell the screen protector is even on. I'm just gonna smooth out some edges and then we're good to go. And then for cases, we have three different MagSafe cases from ESR for my iPhone 16 Pro Max. Starting off with the classic hybrid case, this is their OG clear case and was probably my favorite case on the 15 Pro Max. I actually have two versions and I prefer the black bumper version here since I think it matches the black titanium more. It's super thin yet really protective. I drop my phone a lot and it has solid drop protection with a raised camera guard and screen guard, so I know I'm always safe. And of course it's MagSafe compatible and the magnets on the ESR cases are really strong and they even claim to have the fastest MagSafe charging speeds compared to other cases. But my favorite part about the ESR cases is the built-in stash stand. The camera bumper here doubles as a kickstand, which is perfect for watching videos on the go or just inclining the phone for a better viewing angle when you're using it on a desk. They also have a new CloudSoft case this year, which feels like the Apple silicone cases, and they're super comfortable to hold with a variety of colors. But again, you get the strong and fast MagSafe built-in, as well as the drop protection and the stash stand. And if you know you're going to need even more protection, ESR has the Cyber Tough case, which offers the ultimate drop protection. It's a three-layered case designed for shock absorbing drop protection, yet it still works with all of your favorite MagSafe accessories and has that built-in stash stand. But you can't go wrong with any of these cases and they're super high quality and will probably last you throughout the entire time you have your phone. So thanks again to ESR for sponsoring this part of today's video and be sure to check out their accessories using the links in the description below. All right, so the phone is pretty much done getting set up now. So let's quickly talk about first impressions of the new A18 Pro processors and what that means for performance. To be honest, I'm more excited about the efficiency boosts rather than any actual performance improvements to the computing 
editing or the graphics since I never even pushed my 15 Pro Max to the limits. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the 15 Pro Max never felt slow yet and the 16 Pro Max doesn't feel any faster. The new thermal structure in this phone is supposed to help with the heat and allow for 30% higher sustained performance. I just find that funny because the phone is already heating up slightly from just re-downloading all of the apps that I had from iCloud and it's not really even running any software. But I do game quite a bit on my phone though, so I'll definitely test that out in the next coming days and let you know how it holds up in my next day in the life review. All right, before we forget, let's talk about the flagship feature that Apple added in the new iPhone 16s this year, the camera control button that Apple refuses to call a button. It's really just a capacitive pressure sensitive button that has a vibration motor built into it to mimic that half pressing feeling of a real camera. You press once to open the camera app and then you press again to take a photo or you hold it down to take a video. This is my first time playing around with the button, so nailing the pressing to zoom does take a little bit of getting used to. And honestly, right now, I feel like I'm much faster at just using the preset buttons on the screen to navigate, and I don't know if there's anything that I can do with these preset buttons that I would need to use the slider for. I think the more important reason they added this button, at least for most people, is for the Google Lens capability with Apple Visual Intelligence when Apple Intelligence comes out later in December. You would just point the camera at something, press the capture button, and then it'll give you more information about what you're looking at. But for now, it's just another shortcut way for me to open the camera app, which isn't a bad thing, but I'll definitely need to test it more day to day to see if it's actually more useful for me. You might be wondering how cases interact with this new button given all the sliding and varying pressures. Apple's first party cases will have a glass insert, so you can still keep the capacitive button capabilities, while most other cases I've seen, like this one from ESR, will just have a cutout, so you can still fully utilize the button. But yeah, in terms of the actual camera system, we still have the same 48 megapixel main lens, but now they're calling it a fusion camera and it's supposed to have a faster sensor. I also read that images are supposed to look slightly better than the 15 Pro Max, but even zooming into these images right now, I can hardly tell. But I can tell that the new 48 megapixel ultra wide is a lot higher quality than the 15 Pro Max and it'll probably be a lot more usable now in low light scenarios. And then the only other change for video, I believe is being able to record in 4K 120 FPS now, which is quite nice, I guess, if you're trying to film anything cinematic. And again, I keep on saying this, but in my next video, I'll have the chance to bring out both of these cameras to do some real world testing. So let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you want me to test or see in that next video. But yeah, that's about it for my first impressions on the 16 Pro Max. Aaron, talk about Apple intelligence or else but yeah, jokes aside, I was really thinking about whether or not I should spend some time talking about Apple intelligence in this video, given how big of a part it was of this year's keynote. And I'm all for Siri getting smarter, but unfortunately Siri here is just as frustrating as it is on every older iPhone, since this ships with iOS 18.0, which has literally zero Apple intelligence features on it today. There are so many promised AI features here that are actually quite far away from being released. So Apple marketing this phone as something that was designed and built from the ground up for Apple intelligence just kind of feels like they had nothing else to talk about. Obviously coming from my 15 Pro Max, it's not much of a difference or an upgrade. In fact, it might be the most incremental upgrade we've ever seen from Apple without Apple intelligence here yet. I'm also a bit torn on the black titanium versus the white titanium. So let me know what you guys think because I do have two weeks to swap the color here. Thanks again for watching until the end and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the upcoming day in the life review of this phone once I get a chance to use it more day to day. Let me know what you guys think about these new iPhones, what your favorite colors are, and if you have anything that you wanna see specifically tested in that upcoming video, and I'll see you guys soon.